guys, uh, guys uh, why, uh, while the other guys are still arriving, um, I think I haven't emphasized, I said that I was going to bring some old uh, papers here, but I, I don't think that I explained why I wanted to, keep, to, to have these papers and not more recent papers. Uh, hopefully you will understand as we read this material, uh, it's basically because although some of these papers are 30 years old, I still think that they they are very meaningful. <laughs> so they still, um, how could I say, they still represent uh, uh, the way uh, we uh, think IT in, in organizations. Uh, many times, and I'm, of course I, I have to read very recent papers all the time, I, um, at this time I'm, I'm becoming a little of a lazy researcher but uh, until three years ago, until the pandemic, at least, I, I, I used to follow everything to the, you know, ev everything that was published in this field. Uh, of course, everything that was published and I, I, I could get a handle to and, 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 and had time to read, I would read. Um, I am still the editor uh, of a couple of uh, jo academic journals in this, in this area, so I still read a lot, although when I said that I became a little lazier, yeah, is that simply because after chat GPT took over uh, our ability of writing, I say, well, now I don't, I, I don't even know who, who's writing any longer, and, and I feel a bit lazy of, <laughs> of reading stuff that has, has been written by, it actually has been written by our collective, right? Because artificial intelligence, at this stage at least, it's uh, basically just reproducing uh, in terms of text, it's reproducing what we have already done before. But what I want to say is, I read a lot of stuff that that is that has been written very recently, and I, and some of it I already question. Will, will will I still find this significant next year? And when I have when I find papers that remain significant uh, significant for thirty years, that gives me uh, at least the this impression that will probably be still relevant for another 10, 20, 30 years uh, to come. Um, what happened mainly in the 90s with respect to information systems research was that that was a time when we were starting to figure out that there was something else in addition to uh, strategy execution your term there, that we could do with the technology that we were generating. And it was at that time in the, in the 90s that uh, we started, let's say, creating the models that we have been using uh, since then. Uh, and this is why it's not, that, it's not that people in the 90s were cleverer than anyone else. It's simply because the thing was really new. Someone had to sort of start organize the ways we would think it in the future and those that organized it then let's say paved the roads that we would be able to follow afterwards maybe if they had gone in different directions we would also be doing different things but the way that they for example this model that we'll be analyzing now uh, as any other model it's it, it helps structure our way of seeing a problem right uh, at the same time Whenever we have a model, the same way it helps us see more clearly the possibilities, it also limits our possibilities of seeing other things that are different to what the model proposes. Right? So I have to think here, I have you, uh, I'd like you to think that although the authors here propose four different perspectives for the way in which IT could be uh, considered to help um, achieving the goals of uh, an organization, of a company, um, uh, we should be open to the fact that there could be more, right? Uh, it's a model, and being a model, it helps understand, but it also reduces our understanding in the sense that after we understand that model, it's difficult to understand anything outside it, okay? That's part of the of, of being critical and and, and, and and trying to have the understanding of the ego. We need our models, but at the same time, uh, we need to to stick to models that keep explaining reality. As soon as we we find that the models that we are using 
do not represent reality in a way that helps us take better decisions, it's better that we get rid of those modos and, and build new ones. Okay? Um, having said that, this is still a model that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, until the, the 90s, and I noticed that uh, information technology has been around in organizations at least since the 1960s. I mean, maybe you will think, well, that was not the case in India or that was not the, the case in Nigeria or in Brazil. But let's say in, in, in the United States and some places in Europe, they were already introducing IT in the 60s. Uh, other, in other parts of the world, we, we, we were a little late uh, compared to them, but we, f we sort of followed their steps also because of this idea of models, right? After someone has done something, it's much easier for others simply to follow and do the same or do something close to that than do something completely different, right? Um, this, um, yeah, these models served to pave roads. And when you have a paved road, like a freeway, and you have another way that you can go to the same place, but it's completely unattended, you tend to insist in the, in, the, in, in the path that others have taken before, right? All right, uh, having said that, uh, so we have here four different perspectives that you just, each of you read about one of those perspectives. And uh, our idea here is to now to think uh, about this. They're all valid. The same way as in the morning we discussed that a company may focus more on speed than on cost, or focus more on cost than on quality, uh, on flexibility than, than on uh, uh, reliability or whatever, because they see that that's what is important to their, that, that is what is, let's say, the key most important thing for their business, uh, we will see that there are situations and even environments in which different perspectives may be more successful. It may even change the same way as I told you uh, about the student that, that goes have lunch at the cafeteria of the university during the week and then on the weekend he takes uh, uh, the girlfriend to, to a nice restaurant. Uh, it may also mean that we will have to change our perspectives a long time because at some stage it may make more sense for a specific organization to follow one perspective and a couple of years later it may be more interesting to do it differently right so this is something that we'll have to ch to observe here uh, all right we had uh, um, uh, Netu and Avanti uh, read about the first uh, the first possible perspective uh, strategy execution. Could you tell us a, a little bit about uh, that strategy, what you found there? I'll, I'll, I'll put here the, the image so that everyone can follow. You, uh, you have to understand that first, uh, they, they all relate. Let me, let me just... Uh, just a second. Oh, no. They all relate to to this drawing here, right? Uh, this is the original drawing, I draw, uh, draw the square first because the triangles fit here. The triangle that you will uh, try and, and tell us about is, um, well, strategy, uh, strategy execution, it starts here with the upper management and it will spread over here with the operational part of the, the company and it is uh, explained by this triangle here. What, what, what were your impressions about this uh, model? It is a top-down approach. Exactly, top-down because it's decided by the CEO or, or by the main strategists of the organization and then they simply tell the others, this is, this is our strategy, please follow it do not dis do, do not mess up. You have to do exactly what we told you, right? So it follows the hierarchy, and the top management has a business strategy that has to be deployed mm -hmm. by the people he or she, and um, 
let me just translate that uh, uh, maybe to, to the others here. The, the, uh, when we say it follows hierarchy, yeah, again, it's, it's top down. Uh, and the guys at the top are playing chess. Playing chess in the sense that everyone else in the structure doesn't have a say, doesn't have a, 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 a their own agency. They, 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 can, they do not act for themselves. They just follow, let's say, follow orders or follow... Mm -hmm. So information manager and mm -hmm. uh, they act as the strategy mm -hmm. implementer. Mm -hmm. So they make sure that the IT system aligns with the, aligns with and supports the business strategy that has been established. Perfect. And look, when, when we're talking about the information manager there, we're talking about an, an information manager that is here at uh, the lower part of the organization. This information manager is not a, uh, the, the typical CIO that we think uh, today. Uh, he's not thinking strategically. I mean, he or she only has the role of understanding the strategy and converting and, and using the technology to make sure that that strategy is successful. Okay? So... Uh, uh, Notice what happens in this model, and it's important for, for, for everyone. For we, I know that the others read other models, but now it's the time for us to bring the, the parts of the model together here, the pieces together. What happened to, to that guy that should be here, the CIO? Why, why, why doesn't the CIO appear in this model? I can tell you, in many cases, organizations that are that simply follow this uh, strategy execution uh, perspective for the align. And notice it, this is the alignment of IT, of the IT function, the IT departments, with the organization. Many companies that follow this perspective don't even have a CIO, meaning someone who's thinking. Uh, technology strategically. They only have people that are thinking um, uh, strategy, sorry, uh, thinking technology more operationally, right? So let's say in the IT department here, we only have monkeys and ants. We don't have egos. Okay. Of course, it could have happened that the, the IT ego here was simply left aside because the CEO and, 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 and other upper management uh, people think, uh, well, IT is not relevant at this moment. But that usually happens. To think that IT is not ha uh, relevant in a world like the one in which we live means that these guys are very narrow-minded in terms of how come IT doesn't matter, regardless of the area in which, which we are? Even if we are a furniture manufacturer, I would say, well, IT may matter. IT may be what will help you, in, in some cases, even get a, a, an edge in the market. It may, maybe. And of course, if you don't have anyone thinking IT strategically, that will never happen. But otherwise... Otherwise, uh, it will happen, all right? It will. So, so it's not because they, they've killed this guy. It's probably because this guy has never existed in the, in the firm. After we have uh, an, a, a CIO, probably other perspectives will also be considered, not only strategy execution, right? Uh, but we may, be, we may have a challenge here to... If, if our organization only knows this way of dealing with IT strategy, I think uh, we probably have, it's going to be difficult to develop this uh, perspective of a, the ego uh, uh, and, and developing this, this other part of the, let's say, the graph here so that other strategies can, can be executed here. Um, I mean... If you, if you get hired to work on a company that up to now has only developed strategies involving IT, 
that follow this model, is that a half glass full or a half glass empty? Do you know the, the, the thing of that? I mean, you, you can, we can always be pessimistic or, or optimistic, right? The, the optimistic perspective would be, wow, I, I'm coming to a very traditional company in which they have not yet perceived that IT may change the game. So I may be the person who will, do, who will be doing that, right? This is the half full glass of water. There is also the perspective of the, the half empty glass that you'll say, gee, I don't know if I want to work for a company that does not value IT. I don't know if, 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 if you, you, you may face this situation when you, you, you're looking for employment, that you get there and you think, well, this company, it's, well, I'm, I'm here. I, I am someone who, who have some sophisticated uh, IT skills. And now I come here and it seems that they're still in, what, in rock age. Uh, or, uh, do I want to work here? Do you see... The, 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 the glass half full or half empty. If you see it half full, yeah, there's a, a lot of opportunities there. But, but I can assure you that those opportunities will not depend on your technical abilities with the hard sciences. It will depend much more on your ability to communicate with people and show the importance of that technology. This is where uh, your abilities in information systems would be uh, probably very welcome. So if you're very technical, I would say don't get into a company that does not see the value of uh, IT. If you are someone who has a good perspective, a good, good technical uh, background, but at the same time you, you, you have the, what I've been calling here the perspective of the ego, if you start seeing how that you can go further, maybe a company like that is a, an opportunity, not, not, not a problem. Okay. All right, and then uh, so th this was the. First, do you have anything else that you, you have marked there as important with respect to that? Pay attention here to what what they show here below the 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 the. the this picture it says what is the driver what is the driver for the the strategy here well the driver is uh, the, for, for whatever happens in this organization the driver is the business strategy of course these guys are thinking and and they're pushing their ideas towards the other so so that's what's driving any change that happens there what is the role of top management top management these guys up here they are formulating the strategy. And in fact, they're formulating that strategy alone. They, they're not asking anyone else. See, it's top down. The, the, the flow here comes down. They, they think and, uh, and make the others execute. What is the role of the IS management, information systems or, or, or IT management or whatever? They're strategy implementers. Remember when I told you the kind of engineer that I was? I was an implementer. I told Dad, please, uh, dad, dad, not dad. Boss, uh, please tell me what you want and I will implement it for you. I was, in, and in fact, engineers tend to be pretty much strategy execution uh, uh, staff. Someone think the, the strategy and then tell me and I will implement it. If I am uh, competent, I will implement it in a way that the strategy will be successful. And the, the criteria performance here, so how will I be evaluated based on, notice that uh, this strategy only is only thinking about IT if IT can reduce cost. So it's basically here, when we're thinking about strategy execution, uh, th this, kind, th this kind of perspective, it depends on uh, the CIO and, uh, sorry, the CEO and uh, the, the upper management here, thinking of well, thinking of uh, changes in business, and what the IT has to do is not to disturb it, if possible, to help it, but help it by improving the the efficiency of the process, so reducing cost or or improving quality, 
but uh, pretty much related to something that someone else has already thought. Okay, so this is the first uh, 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 possible perspective. The second perspective that these authors show us is technology transformation. Uh, who were the guys in charge of that? Okay, what what did you what, what did you read that was important there? To enhance the companies? Trend. 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 Oh, strategy. Trend. Strategy. Okay. Uh, notice here, uh, these guys now appear here. They're here. There, there, there is someone that is, there is a CIO. There is a CIO that goes to, even if this was a manufacturing plant, very traditional industrial revolution company, uh, there is a CIO here that goes to the, the, the company's cafeteria with the president to have lunch together. These guys here need to have lunch together. They, they need to talk. Do, by the way, do you think that this guy here, the CEO, has lunch together with that, that manager from the, the previous? Here, if I go back to, to the previous part of the model here. Do you think that this guy sits with this guy here to talk about strategy? Never. It's different hierarchical levels. He would. He only talks to the other strategists of the company. He doesn't. He doesn't go down to talk to, to regular people, right? Of course, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm overemphasizing here. This it depends a lot on on the the, the character and perspectives and, and, and ways of uh, leading. But in general, this guy here has little chance of even knowing that IT could help in any different way because he doesn't talk to this guy here. In the model now that uh, we have here, they are, let's say, at the same strategic level. So they, these are guys that talk uh, and they advise each other. They, they ask each other's opinions. So this guy here who has a, the perspective of the eagle, who sees the whole forest, has someone else who also sees the whole forest, and he can ask, uh, uh, I, I, have the, I have an idea here of uh, maybe in ways in which IT could transform our business. Does this make sense to you? You, you know more about technology than I do, right? But notice that still the arrow is Look at the direction here. It's still the the CEO or the the business leaders here um, talking to to the IT. It's not the IT going going there and talking to the. Uh, it's not the IT having an idea and going and talking to the business. It's the business people coming to IT with an idea and IT saying, "Yeah, this is feasible or not or not." Now at a, a a, at a strategic level, not at an operational level, as it happened in the previous mode. Okay, what else uh, did you see there? Anything else uh, that you want to highlight with respect to the... So significant investment in technology. Uh, and the, the previous model, was there any investment in technology? Maybe. Some, but it's, it's, it, it was very infrastructural technology. If we had read uh, Nicholas Carr, we would say, yeah, the other, the other one was thinking about IT as infrastructure, whatever is needed to simply execute the, the strategy. Over here, they're thinking of ways of doing things that others have not done yet. This may be proprietary uh, uh, technology that is being discussed and eventually generated here. Okay, a lot of uh, money invested in technology, but because this guy here is influential, he w when asked, he can convince the, the the strategists here that IT can actually help that company perform better. 
and, and transform it. But notice that the transformation that is happening here, it is a technological transformation. I wrote there uh, for the, this is actually the, the red one, the, the red, the red uh, triangle there. I wrote there, technology transformation involves doing the same in a different way. So we're not here to change the, the business. Uh, we are here to, to make the business uh, better than, than it already is, but keeping its uh, essence, keeping uh, basically uh, doing the, 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 it's much more than simply executing the strategy because here we're, we're changing all the, the technological infrastructure to become much more effective in doing what we have to, we want to do. But basically, uh, we, we, we are doing whatever the business is proposing. We're saying, yes, we are technically, that, that's technically feasible. We can do it. Maybe we should pay attention here to what is the driver now? The, the driver is still the business strategy. Notice, everything starts here. See the flow of arrows here. Uh, what is the role of the top management? Notice how interesting here. In this case, top management has a visionary uh, role. They are they're technology vision, visionaries. They, it's, it's the business leaders here who have this, cap this capability or this capacity of noticing that some technology that is available in the market or maybe even inside the organization can be used to do, uh, to, 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 to provoke a, a, some sort of revolution in terms of how to, to, to do whatever the firm is doing. The role of the IS management is Technolo technology architect. Why? Well, the, the CEO had the dream, and then he comes to this guy and asks, is this feasible? And then this guy, as a good engineer, is going to say, yes, I will make it feasible. Yes, technology allows, it's possible. Uh, we will do it. Uh, but he's doing that. Pardon? Yeah, we're, we're doing that with, a, uh, with uh, this ego's perspective, right? Um, and what is the, pri the performance criteria here? Now uh, the company uh, uh, will consider that it was successful if that technological change led the company to develop a technology leadership in the market. Can you think of, of, of course, they cited some companies here. Uh, this is the part of the... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. This is the part of the the text that becomes that's interesting for us because sometimes these companies are not the companies that we relate to any longer. But can you think of any tech, any company that is right now or has recently uh, developed a strategy that you consider that is te uh, a technology transformation aligned alignment perspective? company that is using technology to do what it used to do in the past, but in a, in a much more effective way? Hmm? Hmm? No, I'm asking if you have examples of Uh, of a company, I, I want an example of a company that is uh, developing a strategy that it seems to be similar to this. Let's say the, it's the business is the driver, right? So the company is not being transformed by technology, but it uses uh, uh, technology to transform the way it's, it works. Uh, so to transform its processes, to transform... He said, he said it, he said, but I believe you agree with it or not? <laughs> or are you going to say, he said it, if he's, if he's right, I agree with him. If he's, if, he, if he's sounding stupid, it's only him. <laughs> Do you think that Amazon is doing uh, this when, for example, when 
uh, you, uh, of, we, we have to Amazon, we have to be careful here because Amazon is several different things, right? But let's let's think about the the uh, electronic commerce part of it. The, the the first one that we we were exposed to uh, selling uh, goods through the internet uh, is different to selling goods. No, we're still selling goods, right? The business keeps being selling goods. But selling goods using electronic commerce, come on. Uh, selling goods uh, using uh, electronic uh, commerce, does, does, can that provide a company uh, an edge in the market? Can, can that make this company more successful? Well, of course. Uh, Amazon has become one of the largest companies in the world. Uh, George Bezos' dream was, and in fact, I read a book uh, that he wrote saying, Amazon, the, the company that sells everything. So for those of us who, well, you, were, you, 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 did, you, you didn't face that stage of uh, Amazon, but at the beginning, Amazon sold books, right? For, they still sell, of course. No, yeah, they still sell books, physical and and, and Kindle books. Uh, but again, uh, their business, I'm, I'm sure that when Bezos was thinking about that, we as customers who saw them selling books thought, well, maybe they just want to be a, 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 an electronic bookseller. But he as, again, Bezos is not a technology person. He is he's a business vision, visionary. A business visionary? who thought that it was possible to sell not only books, sell anything using uh, our uh, information technology means, uh, but of course he needed people to help him with this. So he probably looked for, a, for people here that, he was the visionary, right? He had this dream of selling everything through the, the web. Uh, and then he needed to find some, some IT people that, that could be the technology architects to make that possible. So no, it's different, uh, but, but again, in this case, we're still selling, I mean, we're still selling books, we're selling whatever, but we're, 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 it's just a different way of selling that is more efficient. So this uh, technology transformation perspective is a perspective that uh, tries to make whatever we do more efficient. And here I have to, to make a difference between two words that maybe you've always considered to mean the same. Efficiency and effectiveness. Do you consider these words as meaning the same thing or, or not? No? What, what is the difference between efficiency and effectiveness? faster or at a lower cost that's all efficient becoming more efficient and what is being effective isn't that being efficient still well I, I, I know why you're, you're, you're fi yeah Danny, Danny is, is getting closer to it. Yeah. He's bringing out your intention of what you actually plan ahead. What you are working towards, right? right. Let, let me try and make this simple, uh, simpler. And, and of course, language changes over time. Uh, I can assure you that about, uh, again, some 30 or 40 years ago, efficiency and effectiveness, they were probably all synonyms, <coughs> right? Uh, at one stage, there was this guy, uh, this, uh, I think he was German, maybe he was Austrian, I don't know, Peter, Pet Peter Drucker, that the Americans call Peter Drucker, right? Peter Drucker was one of the 20th century's uh, most uh, prolific uh, writers in business. And at some stage, he was a business writer, uh, he, he was a business uh, uh, um, um, professor and he wrote a lot of books in business and some stage he said look 
we have to make a difference between two things that are different. One of them is doing something right. Engineers love that, doing something right, right? Because that's what we, we, we're trained to do. I have a process, I make it better. I'm, uh, uh, so doing something the right way uh, is, um, is efficiency. Effectiveness is doing the right thing. It's different, right? Uh, of course, we want to do the right thing and we want to, to do the right thing right. So this is why we, we need, we definitely need the engineers to perfect the, the, the process, to per perfect the methods that we use so that we become more efficient. The problem is when we become more efficient without knowing what we should be doing. Engineers will only take us Faster, they said, uh, efficiency is, is doing something faster, right? So engineers will only take us faster to the wrong place if uh, they are not effective in what they're doing. In f I'm not talking only about engineers, anyone, all right? We, we need to have efficiency and effective running side by side. Well, Peter uh, Drucker made that difference. And from him on, uh, after that, we started in academia to use this... Uh, words that were synony synonyms in, in, in the past as, as different things because there are different meanings there. So this perspective here is a perspective that is uh, intended to provide efficiency or effectiveness. Are we doing what, uh, whatever we did before in a better way or are we doing something different? So, so we're, we're, we're trying to be more efficient. Amazon, uh, talk, if we talk here about e-commerce, e-commerce is an attempt of doing commerce more efficiently. Okay? So this perspective here is thinking about, it depends on people in the IT departments that can understand and can discuss strategy. In fact, can be part of the strategic uh, team to decide what has to, uh, to, needs to be done. Um, but what they're doing is just trying to perfect the process. So, in fact, this guy here, see, he's a technology architect. This, this CIO here is still very technical. Uh, technical in the sense of uh, making sure that he, he, he understands the processes and, and, and is able to make those processes better than before. Right? Now, let's see another perspective. This is uh, the competitive potential alignment perspective. Uh, who were the guys that were in charge of that? You were? Okay, so what, what did you... What are the main ideas there? Uh, in the main idea is to follow the new trend, the IT new trend, uh, in order to advance our previous ways of doing things to beat our competitors. So uh, we want to, but 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 uh, let's say we, we want. Of course, everyone wants to beat the competitors in the markets. But these guys here, do are they intending to beat the the competitors by doing the same thing more efficiently or by doing different things? No, that by doing the same thing, but they, they follow the trends of uh, IT. What is new in IT markets? Like is there a new in production? Is there a new in production in IT sector that they think can? Changes. Perfect. No, notice that what, what, what is changing here is that in this case, well, first no, check the, 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 the direction of the arrow here. It's the IT, it's the IT guy here who is uh, providing the, the strategies 
with uh, new ideas and new ideas uh, and of course new ide- new technology new technologies but in this case new technology that will affect the business so in fact it's technology being used to change the business right uh, and to change the business many times in radical ways and transforming it into something different than it was before we still need these guys to sit together to have lunch, right? And uh, understand me that when I say that they sit together to have lunch, is that they are that they are able to talk to one another at the same level. It's uh, if one of them was down here, he could go to the boss and say, "Hey, boss, I had a good idea," and the boss will say, "Oh yeah, talk to your talk to your manager there, and he will talk to me later, right?" But these guys, they are talking at the same level, and these guys. Saying uh, he gets to, to, to one day to the company and says, "Look, I went to this fair Hanover Messe in Germany, or I went to this uh, technology fair here and there, and I saw something there that I think that can uh, be a game changer. Uh, it's it's new technology, but it may change our business." Uh, okay. Let's see here what. what what, what the driver is now the driver is uh, uh, the, the IT strategy because IT brings something new into the business yeah. that if the company is not able to to notice it will be left out of the market or it will it will be a second player because someone else will will, will do that right uh, what is the role of uh, the top management uh, top management here has to be a, a bi- business vis- visionary notice that the the, the, the the other perspective they had to be a technology visionaries the business people had to be technology visionaries because at that stage they were thinking well I, I think that technology can help me do what I already do they were not changing their business here they're saying yeah look our business may change so they have to think of be able to see ahead in terms of different businesses okay uh, what is the role of the, the, the IT or IS management He's the catalyst, the catalyst that, that, that one that is bringing the idea and, and helping these guys decide on, on, on this change that is, that is needed. And uh, the, the, the performance criteria, the way in which you would uh, see if the strategy is being successful, here, business leadership. Any examples of firms that you see technology came in, appeared, and that company was very clever, very visionary in taking that technology and changing their own business. So turning their business into something else. Are they still good examples for us today? Tell us what the examples that they had there. Uh, exploitation by Basta Excel IT position. Uh, technologies for greater supremacy. Yeah, the problem, okay, so, so I'll, I'll have to tell you what Baxter used to do, right? Have you heard of this company? No. No. <laughs> yeah. This is the problem, this is, uh, I have to admit, we have one problem with my old papers here, right? We're talking about uh, uh, companies that uh, you do not relate to. So this is why I want to, uh, to think of a, 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 an example of today. But let me just go back to Baxter. Baxter was uh, a company that did, did lo- the logistics of uh, medicine, uh, of medical drugs for hospitals. Uh, and uh, in, let's say in the U- US. And then one day, someone from the IT department, uh, from some someone uh, from IT came to the president and said, "Look, if we put a, a, a terminal, uh, a computer terminal there in the hospital, um, we're talking here about the 1980s, right? If we put a terminal, and it was a re- actual terminal at that, that stage, it was not even a PC, a terminal inside a hospital, they will be able to assess as much e- more easily than they assess the other uh, pr- suppliers of uh, medical." Uh, supplies uh, and that will make our business uh, a different and then they they change their business because uh, uh, and they, they changed it in a very radical way because they, they became a they, 
they started uh, uh, um, uh, in some cases they, they became the, the managers of the supply of the, the, the customers or something uh, so uh, they changed the business itself right but I'd like to think of a uh, uh, of uh, something that that may be happening right now with a company that you know meta uh, and, and when you're talking about meta you're still talking about, you're talking about their uh, that dream the, 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 their that, that vi like, I'll not call it, the vision of uh, uh, of uh, immersion uh, uh, met, met, how, how do you call it meta meta, meta? yeah yeah but met, but Meta World, no. No, they, 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 yeah, they, they, they do have a, a they, they, they want, they want the world to be more than simply augmented reality. They, they want you yeah. to be completely, yeah. That, and, and, and of course, technology. Metaverse, metaverse, yeah. Technology would be the way <laughs> to allow that vision to happen. So notice that technology comes here. As a way of transforming an organization and well, transforming the world itself, right? So I think this is this is a, a, a good uh, today's example of a company that goes there. The, the the technology part of the company says, "Look, we have the technology, or we have, or we or we we are developing technology that may lead us in this direction." And then, the, 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 of course, the business leader there, Zuckerberg, and his uh, has to say, yeah, that's that's where I think that we should go, and I, I do agree that technology can lead us uh, to that. So I'll give you money so that so that we work on that. And mm -hmm. uh, other companies that you think that are that that have this competitive potential alignment perspective, Tesla. Uh, Maybe if we think for and uh, and notice that this uh, again it's it's uh, as a model it's trying to show us things as being completely separate and distinct right and but you will probably find that sometimes to think about this model and the previous you would say am I really uh, bringing technology to change the business uh, 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 which is uh, this. Uh, Competitive potential alignment perspective, or is it the opposite? We're we're we're, we're actually reinfor reinforcing the business that, business that we already had with with different technology, and that makes our, our business be something also very different. When when we were talking about the Amazon uh, e-commerce in general, I was pushing you the idea that e-commerce is basically commerce, right? As as in the past, but is it? I mean, hasn't it? Also change it. Do we consume the same way as we did in the past? Right. It's not just you know. I was saying, yeah, Amazon transformed the means, but what we are doing is we, we keep still buying things. But it's not only that. There is also a bit of this other perspective here of that we are not just only buying that. We are now buying things that we would not have bought before simply because it's more convenient, easier. Uh, Amazon, for example, when Amazon Prime doesn't charge you for the delivery hasn't it changed its own uh, uh, it's not only that it, it, it delivers you it, it has changed the business uh, right so so understand that the model uh, tries to explain different things but uh, there are things that are fuzzy there in the middle one thing that is important for us with respect to this uh, pers perspective here in, in figure four and that one in figure three is that both of them needed someone, some IT people here, that have the ego's view. For those who just arrived in the afternoon, uh, I said in the morning that we, many times we, we, we have in organizations, we have people that are very competent, but they have the ant's view of a leaf of a, a tree in a forest. And then we, we may have the monkey's view that is the middle management that uh, knows that, e that, that that ant and the other ants around and knows some of the, the trees in the forest. And we have the eagle's view that sees the whole forest, right? The, these guys that we are talking about, Zuckerberg, George Bezos, Bill Gates, 
uh, they're all egos. Sorry, they, 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 they may have been at some stage uh, uh, the, the ants, but for very little time, right? And very quickly they realized, uh, not because they, they were exposed to my class, but, but, but because they were exposed to ideas that are, uh, the, or, or, or simply they developed <laughs> ideas that later on became my class, right? But they're, 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 they, they simply understood that the, 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 the transformation that they, they, they were causing was not merely technical. Uh, they had to have a much broader view of, uh, of the environment to, to make their decisions. I am sure, for example, that when Amazon Prime started its uh, free delivery, uh, many engineers were probably ca uh, cautioning them and saying, look, this is not cost effective. We'll be, we'll be losing money with this. And then the, the ego had to say, yes, we'll probably lose money for a while, but you know, this will make people to buy more. And then when people buy more and their neighbors buy more, and so I, I will be delivering to that street. I, uh, uh, and I don't, I don't know, I, I lived in, in, in uh, Berkeley in, in California. Uh, for a while, I was uh, a visiting, visiting, well, not a visiting professor, a visiting scholar. There, I was, uh, and um, and it was crazy the way that in that society, in that moment, the the, the 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 Amazon delivery truck it would stop house after house to do deliveries. So, giving Prime to to everyone was really cheap to them. They, they, if they didn't have anything to deliver to that guy, they would they were already going there for for their neighbors. And that changed their their business again. Okay. All right, and then we have a the the last triangle in our no sorry no, this one where is it? the last triangle in our in our model that is the service level alignment perspective. I think that you were you guys were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's uh, again. You, sometimes again, models are simplific over simplifications of reality, right? So, just think of these models. If 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 by the end of this discussion here, uh, we, you you we, you have the understanding. Well, it's not only strategy execution. There are other ways of seeing. It's it's already great, right? You don't have to get into the same level of understanding that the, the authors had here because uh, it, it gets fuzzy sometimes. Uh, but basically here, what's happening is that, well, IT can, IT can help uh, the, the, the company become more efficient and create a, 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 not a new, inf new s it's service-based. And notice what happened to the, the upper management here. Does this mean that these guys exploded the, and said, we don't need the upper management any longer? No, basically, the upper management said, yeah, this, this uh, it's cool, your idea is cool, but I don't need to be involved be because this is purely technical, right? You, 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 you do it, right? And, and, and this appears here, for example, the role of top management. The top management is a prioritizer. Uh, they will say, yeah, this is, a, this is a priority, but it's a priority, but it's a technical priority. I will be focusing on other things that I'm doing here uh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, IT, the IT staff, are competent enough to to run these projects, do it, and just report to me once in a while so that I, I'm informed. Right? Uh, the role of the IS management executive leadership, so that they're actually executing the strategy here, uh, or, or sorry, ensuring that the, the the strategy strategy is executed, and the performance criteria is well. We'll see if this led to. Better customer satisfaction, for example. The upper management has nothing against customer satisfaction. In fact, the upper management, those guys that do not appear here, they say that they understand that customer satisfaction is very important. Uh, 
for some companies, customer satisfaction is one of the, 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 one of the most important criteria. And in that case, maybe the upper management is wishes to be involved. In other cases, they say, well, we know that this 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 will take us to a better stance. Uh, we are focused on other aspects of the business here. Do your job there and, and do it well, and we'll we'll all be happy. Okay. Right. Uh, now I want you just uh, to just go to go back to the 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 role of the IT management in each one of these perspectives. See, here we need someone who's an executive leader for this pers this perspective. For the previous one, we needed some, uh, uh, someone someone uh, 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 let's say the, the the IT guy had to be a catalyst of the business of, of the catalyst of the change proposed by the the strategy. And here, he needs to be the technological architect. So, so he has to be very technical to make sure that the technology is designed in the way that it will work. And in the first, uh, first one, we had uh, strategy implementator, imp implementer, right? Do you think, now if you think of your own qualities, your own uh, abilities as... as human beings, do you think that you would be able to switch from one of these uh, roles to another easily? It's not that easy, right? Um, so, uh, and, and, and I can tell you that probably there are companies that will have, that will follow one of these perspectives more commonly than following others. But I would say that those, these four perspectives, they may all be necessary. And, and sometimes even different projects, different parts of the organization, mainly if it's a large, a large organization, some part may be, some part of the, the IT may be dealing with uh, uh, simply strategy execution. Another one may be helping create a new business. Another one may be uh, uh, architecting uh, the, 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 the technological change. So. Uh, uh, but but this is uh, if 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 all has to be done by the same person, it may be very challenging. And this is why sometimes we see uh, companies in which they have had a leadership in IT for a while, uh, and then um, it's decided that the, the leadership has to be changed. And it has to be changed because sometimes you need different skills there uh, for the new let's say the the, the new challenges that the that organization thinks that it will experience okay all right so this was uh uh still yeah still what we, we had plans to 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 do in the morning basically again what i want my after having talked all of this after you well you only read a bit of the paper but if you had read it all what what is the summary of the opera here oh, the, the, you know the, the important things to remember is uh, strategy can be seen from dif different perspectives. Companies may organize itself in ways that they, they can explore uh, different perspectives. If a company, where is I, I missed the, where is it? Not this one, not this one, here. Uh, if a company does not have people that fulfill people that are, that are in this part here if they don't have people that, ha that if they don't have any egos that understand technology they will not be able to implement well they will be able to implement strategy execution but they will not be able to implement technology transformation and they will not be able to to implement Competitive potential, the competitive potential alignment strategies, uh, and uh, so that means that it's it's wise that companies develop leadership in IT that understands strategy and that can discuss stra a strategy with the other uh, strategic, uh, let's say, upper management um, staff. Uh, because otherwise the company misses on these opportunities and I would say these are probably the best opportunities right these two strategies here 
competi competitive potential alignments and business transformation alignment are probably the two that are more impactful to an organization and, and, and to its, uh, uh, its positioning in the market. Okay. Any questions with respect to that? Any ideas, any thoughts? Would you like to add another triangle to this model? Or well, it would be difficult to fit it there because this, tri the, this square only fits four triangles inside it. But any ideas? Did this make sense to you? Look at this guy again. Isn't he the the uncle any, of anybody in this class? There's a good chance that Mr. Venkatraman here is is someone's relative. <laughs> Uh, same guy, right? Same guy. Uh, few years. No, actually, this the, the first one here was uh, 93. So one year later, same guy writes another paper, which is again these are these are my picks from the the 90s, right? If maybe you had another professor here. And in fact, I had this discussion uh, last year. We we uh, last year I chaired. Uh, this con uh, conference, America's Conference on Information Systems in Panama, uh, and I was discussing that with a Mexican professor and a professor in the United States. I asked each one of them to pick their own authors from the 90s that they thought that were more influential. I was always with the with with the Indian uh, professors here. Uh, well, Indian professors in the United States, huh? so, and th these guys, uh, and they had other references. And then we started discussing. The ideas are sort of the same, right? Of, of course, each one packages the, the ideas their own way, but, uh, but they were sort of the, the, the same. So I, I kept to my, to my reference. What is, did this guy do in, in this IT-enabled business transformation? And besides, what do you think that could be the difference between IT-enabled business transformation and and uh, the buzzword of today, digital transformation. Do you think that we're talking about different things? What people were talking about in the 90s and now what we're calling digital transformation? It's the same thing, guys. Of course, we have uh, technologies now that I cannot say that they were not... Uh, they, they were not available at the time, that they were in a more incipient stage of their development. So, for example, the authors in the 90s, business authors, these are uh, information systems, remember, all this relates very close, closely to, to business. Uh, so the business authors in the 90s, when someone came and, said, and talked to them about um, AI, for example, they would say, we don't care because we care for something that can affect business in the short or middle run. If, if, you're, if you tell me that it's only going to affect business in 50 years from now, we don't care for it. Uh, we don't care for it, right? So I, uh, uh, AI was not, it's not that people didn't know about AI, but it, it was still in a very, um, how do I say, very tentative. They, they, they were still very far from becoming mainstream in terms of possibilities for for companies right but the fact is that if it was not AI there were other technologies that were requiring the so-called transformation right uh, at that stage they called it IT enabled business transformation now they call it digital transformation and the dig digital transformation that we have today may involve AI and uh, what else uh, Big data, uh, what, what would be other technologies that are pushing things right now? But let's say at least AI and big data are, 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 are very trendy. But the thing is, it's still business, it's still digital transformation. Uh, uh, and it's still, if those guys had called 
in the 90s if they they had called it IT enabled well if they had instead of IT enabled business transformation if they had called it digital transformation back then you know what would happen to the digital transformation that we started hearing about in 2015 or so they would figure out another name for it because they would have to say that it was different when you have to sell something it has to seem fresh right but the fact is we're still talking about the same thing and and the thing here is the challenge to bring new technologies to an environment that is already established okay uh, that's so so new technologies to an environment and 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 what for either to change the business or to change how the business is done it's it's always challenging right? we don't talk about digital transformation for example in startups do startups need to do any digital transformation no because understand that the term digital transformation means transforming from something into something else if you still if you still aren't anything you don't need a transformation you you start from scratch doing the right thing but the transformation is, is required to in, 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 in any situation that has already been there for a while so whatever is built now involving the most recent uh, understandings of big data and AI to think of a, a business will need digital transformation again with a different name possibly in 10 years from now but the fact w w what really changes there or, or sorry what, what what is kept the same is the fact that when we already have something structured that needs to be changed it's going to be uh, we're, we're, we're going to be challenged because uh, uh, structures do not like to be changed uh, it, and, and basically for things that I've already mentioned here before there's there are switching costs if I have to stop doing what I do to do something different even the time that I, that I stop to think if it, that's reasonable is already in increasing my costs so there's a tendency to try and keep doing whatever we were doing and this is why a hundred years from now there will be people talking about some transformation that will be required to those companies that were fresh in 2024 that became sort of uh, the old guys in uh, 2100s or whatever okay, or, or even 10 years from now we don't even have to go that far because besides things are changing faster so let's have a look at this guy's model for uh, the so-called IT enabled business transformation let me see if I find their paper here this is it uh, so IT enabled business transformation I, th I think that this paper considering that we spent a little we, we were still discussing uh, the the previous paper that was from the morning right and I don't want to, to get too delayed here this paper we we can so summarize it by having a look at this uh, this drawing again we have a an X axis in which we have the range of potential benefits shown here we have a y-axis in which they say the degree of business transformation that is required in order to maybe benefit from the, those potential benefits and then these guys say okay there are several ways in which IT can be used uh, we can uh, we can do what most engineers are very good at we can do local exploitation local exploitation only needs the traditional engineers because it only it only needs uh, 
the ant-like kind of uh, working. Uh, lo localized exploitation means there is a process that is being done in a maybe in a manual way, and then we call the engineer and say, "Is there any way that using the new technologies you have there, we can transform this and perform this more efficiently using IT?" So it's basically we're only looking at efficiency. Is it is it a, a better is is there any so so maybe if we think of, of the other paper we could say that this is lo uh, localized exploitation relates to um, what was the, the 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 strategy execution right whoever is is calling an engineer to do some localized exploitation has already decided on the change that needs to be done and the engineer will be called here and and and. Basically, he or she will be taking an order. I need you to do this and that. Right? Uh, of course, the potential benefit, uh, the, the change that will be obtained is the process will be more efficient. So there is some, poten some, some potential gain here. The degree of uh, business transformation is little. And therefore, the engineer, with, its, uh, with his or her perspective of efficiency of getting straight into solving the problem uh, has no difficulty in understanding that problem mainly because it's localized so it's small it's simple uh, and converting that into a, a solution that that is better than what we had before but this is the first step then we have another uh, step here that the authors call internal integration after several of your departments have gone through local exploit uh, sorry localized exploitation uh, digitalization or, or then uh, you start thinking well we have all these parts of the, the the company that are already digital shouldn't they talk to one another should it be possible for them to to you know to to coordinate activities one with one with the other uh, well, here I would say that the, the ant engineer, ant, the, the, the little animal, uh, the ant engineer will start to struggle because technically he or she may say, sure, I'll start connecting things. The problem with this internal integration is that it's not simply a systems internal integration. When you start integrating things that were done separately before, you start stepping on people's shoes. One of the department may, may have done its localized exploitation in a specific way, and now that uh, it needs to have to be integrated to, to to another department, one will have to decide. Well, they, the systems they don't directly match, so we'll have to do some adjustments, conversions. Who's part of the system will be converted? Who will have to put some extra effort into? allowing for, for this integration to happen. So we start having problems there that are not necessarily and only uh, technical problems, involve people, involve different departments with different interests. Maybe interesting uh, to think that different departments in a company have different interests, right? Maybe you should say, well, shouldn't they all be very well aligned to achieve the objectives of the organization? Yes and no. I mean, yes, they should, but are they? No, we are people, right? The, the, the marketing people is fighting against the, the operations uh, department for, let's say, for some uh, budget, right? And, and they, each one of them has the ant's view. They're, they're seeing their own part and they say, yes, I need that. And they don't know that the other also needs so here we start needing some monkey view at least or or maybe some some ego view already to start solving these disputes try uh, start trying to harmonize uh the this uh let's say this interaction that will have to happen between departments i remember that in the the 80s when i was sitting there uh, i had a professor who said at that stage he was really interested with in, in internal integration because he said the, the thing is after an organization is 
electronically integrated, it can work much more efficiently. So he said the localized, uh, localized exploitation takes 80% of the effort, of the technical effort, uh, of, the, of, let's say, of the money that is required, of, uh, of the time, and so on and so forth. And the internal integration uh, uh, will, will, will be only 20% of the effort, but it will have 80% of the benefit. He was really an enthusiastic of integration. Um, and you, I mean, you know that he was not the only one. I mean, uh, even today we have many companies in the market that sell products that uh, the intention of those products are, are simply to integrate an organization and to make sure that it works as one only body and not as several different individual entities, each one fighting for their own interests, right? Um, so ERP, are you familiar with this term, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Software? Uh, SAP, for example, uh, is the, the, maybe the Microsoft of, of AR, uh, ERPs, right? Uh, SAP is a German company that does, it's one of the players in this market. Those softwares, they started as uh, trying to do internal integration here. But they, they cleverly started in a, in a situation that, that they said, you know, if you had any, uh, if you had, if, 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 if you had any um, system, um, legacy system that you used before, just throw everything away and we will bring our own stuff and, and, and not only integrate everything at the same time as, as we're doing the localized, integra uh, localized exploitation. Um, Many companies, were, many companies were doing this a little bit uh, before the end of the 2000s. And I, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the uh, bug of the millennium. Or have you heard of it? The millennium bug? The millennium bug was, yeah, uh, the millennium bug was, uh, well, until during, during the, the 1900s, uh, we coded software for decades, having dates with only two, two slots for the year. Uh, and then when we got to this change from the 1999 to 2000, that was an issue because nobody knew how systems that had been code that had been written 40 years before, how it would react to the to zero zero, if the if, if the system would understand as being something that came after nine nine, or if it would think that it came before, right? So it was. It's really interesting. This this is uh, if you ever have a chance of uh, reading about that, your generation, of course, you were being born at that stage or maybe you know after that, right? Um, but uh, but for example, there were there were. Um, Com uh, 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 airplane companies that didn't fly for the last days of uh, 99 or so because they were not completely sure if the systems that they had in their airplanes would not there, there were all sorts of uh, things so there, there was a little uh, may, may, maybe in some cases people were too concerned uh, in other cases well they, they did a lot of work during the years before to, to prevent the, the, that the bug of the millennium uh, could uh, really harm their businesses. And companies like SAP, for example, uh, exploited the situation saying, look, instead of rehiring COBOL uh, coders, you, you know this language, COBOL? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever programmed in Cobol? You have, okay. I, I didn't think that anyone your generation would have uh, programmed in Cobol, but this only shows how legacy systems, how the decisions that we took in the past, still uh, still affect the decisions that we can take. There are many, many so they're still hiring people to write code in Cobol, to fix old systems, or maybe even to expand them. Sometimes, because it's less expensive than starting from scratch. But, you know, uh, uh, SAP and, and, and other uh, companies that uh, built ERPs in the 90s said, now you have a chance of, forget about everything that you have, let's 
start from scratch and you will uh, uh, install our ERP systems and you'll be happy, right? Of course, uh, many companies even went bankrupt for that decision because it's not very, it's, uh, in fact, it's very expensive to throw away all your systems and bring in uh, a new, a new, uh, a new system. Uh, uh, even even if the intention there is is the good intention of integrating everything. But notice that. So looking back at the model here, evolutionary levels. Those these two levels here happen without any change to the business. Right, we're changing the systems, but the systems should comply to the business. Well, the, the integration here, SAP already made some companies change a bit their business because they're, they say, okay, you, you're going to, instead of using your old systems, your legacy, you're now going to use my systems that have the best practices of the market. Guys, whenever you hear these words, best practices, be aware of them, right? Whoever is selling you the best practices has to be questioned because first of all we have to I mean, engineers don't question too much but we do have to question right best practices for whom if they were the best practices that were let's say if they were the practices that were coded because they were the the practices that would solve a specific company's problems great they were the best practices for them what happens after after you have already coded, copying and pasting it to another company has very little cost, right? So vendors have this, they, 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 for, for them it's a miracle if they can say that whatever practice they coded for someone is the best practice of the market and convince the, 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 the other companies to, to use the same. Again, I'm not saying that their practices are not good practices, but buying this idea that they that what they're selling you are the best practices is absolutely stupid right it's the dumbest thing that you can do you may still say well okay i'll use their practices because it's cheaper or for whatever or other or for whatever other reason i find more convenient than coding my own practices in some cases whatever uh, practices are already coded are better than your practices so you, you may even have a benefit there. But uh, we have to think that using the best, the so-called best practices of the market, we, we just become another player, right? Everyone will be leveled uh, with that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. I just say, I'm, I'm just telling you that whenever someone tries to, to sell you best practices, bargain, because they're not the best practice. They're the practices that they coded because they had a, a previous client that needed that. And now they're trying to convince you that you have to, see, to, to, to change your system and use the other company's system. No, there's no problem with that. Bargain with them. Pay half the price because someone else has already paid the other half. Right? Um, but anyway, up to now, up to, to this uh, line here we're talking about evolutionary levels because we're not changing radically the way the company works now we have to start paying attention here guys you there at the back focus uh i know that you you, you sort of came in the middle of the 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 the, the, the conversation we, we we have already discussed several things in the morning and it you may be thinking what am i doing here nah uh, will this make sense to me but it, it, will, it will only make sense if i can if I can get you focused on, on, on our discussion here. Uh, from here on, after this, this, this line, they call it revolutionary levels. Look, they're talking about business process redesign. Redesigning the business processes. If we think uh, about the, the other paper that we just read, or that, uh, what strategy would that be? Redesigning our business process. Let me go back there. Is this is this the one or maybe this one? Right. Redesigning the processes, the technologies. I think this one here, right? Uh, 
okay so uh when when those guys are saying redesigning the 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 business processes we're thinking about using this uh technology transformation alignment perspective to change the way we do th- sim- uh, something we're still doing the same thing but we're changing the way we we do it okay uh we can even go a step further in complexity and 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 and, and when we start i mean if we, if, we, if we redesign the way we do things just think there's a lot of people that have been hired there for the company for sometimes several years you're doing you're going to do it in different ways does that mean that they are out of business does that means that they will have to be retrained uh it, it definitely means that it's not going to be uh, uh an easy process you you have to care about a lot of things but it can get even worse or more more complicated business networks redesign it's going it, it goes further beyond business process redesign uh here in general the business process redesign they're still thinking about things that happen inside the, the, the organization itself right it's it's the way that uh departments work and, and and inside the organization when we think about business network redesign we're thinking the way we connect to suppliers and to customers uh what parts of the business we do inside what we outsource Notice it, it becomes even more complex because again if we now think that it's easier to do the let's say the painting of our products uh somewhere else who ha- have an outside uh supplier to do that what is going to be the reaction of those guys who worked in our or who work in our painting department let's say right what do we have to do about them uh Will they be happy with this change? Will they? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 uh, and and many times the 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 simple fact that it's much easier to connect to outside agents today than it was in the past already shows that we, uh, or provides us with a trend towards outsourcing. Right? Outsourcing did not happen. Or does not happen out of the blue right it's outsourcing happens because in many cases it makes more sense than doing things internally but then you will say well and how come didn't my boss think of that 20 years ago because 20 years ago maybe outsourcing was not the best alternative There is technolo- technologically there is a trend towards outsourcing. This is why we, we hear so much about outsourcing and so little about insourcing. It's a possibility to do also insourcing, right? In fact, we started hearing a little bit more about insourcing uh, more recently uh, after the pandemic or during pandemic uh, times when uh, when some strategists started thinking that their supply chains were becoming fragile because of having suppliers spread around the world. Before they said, well, we we can connect easily uh, and uh, it's cheaper to buy something from China or from whatever, uh, so let's do that. Now they suddenly realize, wow, it's uh, during the pandemic, they were closed there for, for, for a long time and we had no control of that over that maybe we want to to it's really for, for for to ensure continuity of the business you may think well there are things that I'll, i want to maybe i'll, I'll bring inside again many uh, companies in the united states for example are very concerned these days with the fact that a lot of their uh, they are very dependent on, for example, chips that are made in Taiwan. And they say, what happens if the Chinese decide suddenly decide to take over that island? Right? It, shouldn't they have thought of that in the past? Yes, of course. But uh, for many years, the world was a little more stable. And right? more recently, we have the Ukrainian war. We again uh, things are unsettled in the Middle East uh, so 
uh, and and com- so, so what, what I'm trying to say is that company strategy doesn't go only one way. It may go one way and in a, in a different time it may come back, right? But in general, technology pushes towards outsourcing. You outsource, you, you outsource everything that is not your core competence. You keep inside what you really do better than others because that makes the whole chain more effective. I mean, you, you usually you, you, you strategists think of keeping inside what you do best, you do better than others, so that's the, you say this, this is the part that, I'll, that we'll do. And uh, they also say, well, we, we keep inside things that we may not be the best, but we want to become the best because that's where the money is. So you don't outsource simply because someone does it better than you. If you think that that's the really, that's the the, the good meat, right? You say no. There I have to. So that that's the reason for maybe keeping inside something that you you're you're not as good at. Okay. Uh, so, but but anyway, we 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 have to think about this uh, redesign of the network, and then. Uh, we have uh, the, mo- the, the most radical uh, stage here in this, at least in their model, is what they call the business scope redefinition. Business scope redefinition is when I am redefining the, the, the actual thing that I do. If I go back to their previous paper, it's it's this one here, right? I'm I'm redefining my scope because there is there is a, no, a new technological possibility that makes whatever I did before less reasonable, and if I don't change, I'll be out of the market. For example. But again, this is very difficult to do. I have to tell you that uh, I uh, I see. Uh, little examples of, of companies that succeed in, in doing these revolutionary levels here. Uh, what I usually see is companies that are struggling to do what they they would need to do because it's difficult and uh, then they give the opportunity for a, a startup to come in and say, well, look, those guys, they were supposed to, to be doing this with this uh, specific scope, but they're doing doing it the way that they did 20 years ago. Tough luck for them. They have switching costs. For them, it's difficult to change. For me, as a startup, there's no cost to change because I do not have to go through any digital transformation or any sort of transformation. I, I can already design my processes according to the best practices for now. Right? Uh, so uh, I, for example, I think of, of uh, we, we can easily find uh, companies that have redesigned their processes uh, because they found uh, that new technology could allow them to do something in different ways. Sometimes we, uh, it, this is more difficult. Uh, I don't see many examples of companies that redesign their network because that already means outsourcing something that you outsourcing always means uh, taking out something that you have inside right but uh, uh, but but it means this effort and uh, we will tomorrow we'll discuss the case of uh, uh, the way Dell Michael Dell and and, and Dell's company uh, built the empire that Dell had a few years ago, again, the problem now is that it's not, not a, such a shiny company any longer, at least not as a PC manufacturer, because whoever builds PCs today is just, we call it, all, we, we think it's almost commodity, right? But a few years ago, or, or 20 years ago, Dell became the largest PC manufacturer, manufacturer in the world, uh, outbeating IBM, Compaq that doesn't exist any longer, uh, and uh, who else? Um, HP, who actually bought Compaq, 
Dell was ahead of them, and simply because, well, Dell, Dell was a startup, right? And Dell noticed this business should have been, should have redesigned its network, but as it hasn't, uh, I will do it. I will not have to redesign. I will design my business in a way that uh, it, it's it's more sensible. And then what Dell started doing, selling computers straight to to us as customers, right? The, his competitors all had a network that involved a retailer. And he said, well, there is electronic commerce is around. Does it make sense for me to to keep uh, selling computers to a shop and then this computer and then someone wants to, to, to buy a computer they go to the shop but that's not exactly the model that they wanted but it will be the model that they will have simply because that's the one that they have in stock what if I start selling computers through the web and what if people can customize the products they want to buy and so that was the kind of stuff that, that that's Dell was thinking in his startup minds without any barriers because he didn't have any structure. Whoever already has a structure of a classroom like this one cannot have a circle, right? But he didn't have a room, so he could shape the room the way he wished. Um, so I find that uh, these upper levels of uh, revolutionary uh, transformation here, they hardly ever happen uh, as part of the digital transformation of any company. Th this is where they start failing and where they get out of the market and someone else that perceives that this is important and, and that this is necessary comes in and starts working in uh, this ways. Uh, but notice, it's, it's again, it's a very simple model. Uh, and it's a model that uh, I think helps us as engineers and mainly could help you as engineers starting in your, let's say, in your professional life to understand the level of trouble you're getting in when you're in a project, right? It, it's, is it localized exploitation? It only affects those that are hiring and doesn't have, doesn't expand to other. It's simple. Uh, anyone can do. Uh, in fact, here, just technical knowledge is sufficient. Uh, the more we go up here, the 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 the, the, the highest the, the the required business transformation, and therefore, the more risks we have. Right? So don't be naive. We will tomorrow afternoon. We will uh, make a simulation here, an exercise in, in class. Uh, in which we will simulate a situation uh, and then after that simulation you will probably say well we should structure this business in a different way and I will tell you yeah Dell was able to do it IBM Compaq and HP weren't so at least for 10 or 10 years or a little more than that Dell had a very privileged situation in in, in the market simply because he could make the changes that others were not able to. But we'll, that will leave for, for tomorrow. Uh, again, we're talking here about a 15-page uh, uh, paper. Uh, I've, I've sent you a zip file with the files for today. Hopefully, tomorrow I'll be able to provide you with... Uh, with access to the to, to Moodle, and you you see this in a more structured way, right? But uh, but at least you you I, I want you to have these files with you so that you want to, to to browse them. Again, I don't think that you will, you will have the time to read it now. Uh, hopefully, you. I always have some some additional incentive for reading later that you have an exam in. What, how much time? Let me see. When 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 is it your exam? It's it is uh, it is on the eighteenth, the eighteenth of October, uh, which is ten days from now. Uh, I wish you to, to at least to browse these papers, some of them until then, 
okay however uh, again I, I don't want you to and, and you'll see for engineer I understand it for engineers that the first first ones you read uh, are even more difficult you have to get adapted to the jargon also right so after a while you notice that the jargon is keeps the same and doesn't change much so so you read the, the read goes uh, is, is a little more fluid uh, but I don't expect you to you know to read all of them from top, top down uh, but I'd like you to have these as references I, I, I think if you do if anyone does that will be that that will provide you with a competitive edge in the in the markets uh, but you don't have to right but at least I, I want you to be able to spot what is important about uh, each one of these guys ideas and for this guy here for this guy here I think this model uh, needs to you need to, to develop some level of understanding of, of, of this model right uh, again his the examples he gives here are all examples from the the 90s uh, I'm not even sure, for example, if we nowadays, if there is still a lot that we, we need to talk about local exploitation, which means digitizing something that was manual before, right? That was done in, well, I, I'm sure that there always is. There, there, are, there are always situations in which we have to go this far, right? But I want you to understand that although this is academically, it's very easy for us to, to to say, oh, this is the beautiful, this, this is the, the thing to do. When you go to the practice, it's difficult because sometimes the chairs are even screwed to the, to the floor so that you don't move them, right? Uh, the structures that are there, the, the ways things are done, make it very difficult to, 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 to change. Uh, and in those cases, I just have to, to tell you, be aware because for you, it's difficult to change. For someone who's about to start a business, it's very easy to do it. Maybe it's even, sometimes we have to be in a large corporation to see all the difficulties that they have to do the right thing. So then, then we decide to, be, to become in, entrepreneurs and, and, start, and, and, and start a startup to do exactly what the big ones cannot do any longer. Right? Remember that all those companies that I mentioned up to now were startups one day. Right, Microsoft was a startup. Well, all the uh, Meta and uh, Amazon and uh, Google, uh, Dell—they were all startups. Uh, so our area, in our area, one thing that we can say is, startups will succeed for quite a while, simply because they have this opportunity of getting into into the the market where others are are struggling to do the change that they. The, the digital transformation that they should be doing. So this is, this is why we see so many startups there. But at the same time, do not get too excited because, uh, uh, of course, we're giving examples of startups that did well. But for each startup that does well, we have thousands that fail also. Right? They, they have the opportunity to start something new, but uh, they don't have the many times they don't have the resources. Uh, and they don't uh, many they, many many times they don't have the expertise and so on and so forth. So don't want you to venture without uh, yeah without good consideration. But uh, on the other hand, notice that big companies are beatable because they cannot change the speed we would like them to. Uh, let me come back here. Questions so far? Any ideas? No? See, see how, how bad this format is? Again, one talks, the others listen, some sleep. <laughs> because, you know, we can't change the structure. Uh, we can't even uh, maybe do some exercise here too. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so before we start the next one, maybe let's have a, a, a break, a 15-minute break, uh, so that those that need to wake up can wake up and refresh.